Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Cardone Solutions Podcast. My name is David Bradley. I am your host. I am the Senior Sales and Marketing Manager with Grant Cardone. Now, don't get all weirded out by the senior part. That just means I've been here a while. <laughs> okay. Um, what do we do on the Cardone Solutions Podcast? Well, it's very, very simple. We, uh, we like to take Grant's content, his blogs, his strategies, his articles, emails that are going out. We like to rip as much value out of them as we possibly can, regurgitate them a bit, and then spit it back out to you with some measurable action ideas that you can implement into your sales and your business and your life. Once in a while, I'm going to take some of my own little wisdom and spin on it and give it back to you. And then every once in a blue moon, I'm going to sit down with a fellow Cardone follower fan, uh, typically somebody that's been on our programs or been to some of our live events that I've run into. Uh, through my many years with Grant, uh, who has some value to share with you, who's got some juicy nuggets that you can take into your sales and your business and your life. And um, man, I just had a great conversation uh, with my friend Sonia Graham. And she's in, she's a realtor and uh, she's got a company called GTG Military Moves. Uh, she's over there in the northeast of the United States, but regardless of where she's at, she can help you get a house anywhere in the United States. Very, very cool lady, and I had a really, really good conversation with her. Um, we met on the phone one day. I was following up on, on a product I think she bought from us, and we got to talking, and, and I realized that uh, I, I've got a person with a ton of wisdom and a really awesome message to, that, that deserves to be shared and discussed. You know, we got a lot, there's a lot going on right now between COVID-19, between the tragedy uh, of George Floyd and everything that's come with that. Uh, There's unemployment. Um, 2020 is is a stressful year. And I would imagine there's going to be a lot of anxiety. There is. There's a lot of anxiety that comes with 2020 and everything that's going on. There's probably a lot of people working through some depression right now. Um, And so Sonia is going to share with us and talk to us about how she handles it, about what she does with it. She uh, herself, prior to 2020, has experienced trauma in her life. She uh, lives with PTSD, and I'm not going to say she struggles with it or she has it. She lives with it and lives well. And uh, I was very, very inspired by her and and our conversation today. She's going to, we're going to talk about some of the causes of stress and anxiety. We're going to look at how to handle that. She shares uh, how she deals with emotional triggers in her environment, uh, what she does about it to get through it. Um, Also, she talks about identifying the things that are holding you back. And and what she shares shares with us what they are may not be what you think. Um, She also has a very unconventional a step in her morning routine, which I'm going to tinker with. I'm going to try it. Um, I think it might be helpful for some folks. Not sure um, for everybody, but it may work for you. I don't know. Uh, try it uh, when you hear it. See if it works. Uh, she also talks a little bit about, you know, how she puts like a literal time stamp on feelings that she's experiencing, which I thought was just incredibly powerful about being in control of your emotions and deciding how long you want them to go for. I was blown away by that. Um, she then goes in to talk about how, how to go from dealing with tragedy. So when you're dealing with tragedy, how do you go from denial, which is an entry point into the five stages of grief, how do you go through denial and move yourself through into gratitude of all things? So when something bad happens, when something tragic happens, how do you work through it in a way that when it's over, you're actually grateful that it happened? Wow, right? So she talks about that and how she gets there. Um, And then the other thing she talks about is what it actually means, and this blew me away, what depression and anxiety actually mean, what they mean to her. and and, And I feel like if you can embrace that piece of concept well, that... Depression and anxiety will never be as big a problems for you as they are right now. So whatever level you have experienced depression or whatever level you've experienced anxiety, once you get a handle on what she shares, they will not be as impactful, I guess, if that's the right word. They won't be as strong. Okay, It'll actually minimize the impact of those two emotions for you if you can get it. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna stop yapping about it and just get right to it. Allow me to introduce and welcome my friend Sonia Graham. Okay, and we're live. I'm here with my good buddy Sonia Graham. We're gonna talk a little bit about handling anxiety and stress in sales and business and in life. Um, so thank you guys for being here, but more importantly, thank you Sonia for being here. Um, why don't thank you, you just share? Me. Yeah, I you know we we've talked on the phone a couple times, and I just I love your energy. I love your spirit. And um, I think you bring a lot of positivity to what can be a very stressful environment, sales, business. Uh, and I know that right now with things like everything that's going on, you know, which that's a laundry list in and of itself. The worst game of Jumanji ever. Right? Yeah, I love that meme. <laughs> that cracks me up. So, and that's where we're at, right? We're, what is it? Level six? Because it's June, you know? Yeah, yeah. Only six more to go. Right. Hang in right. the team. <laughs> the one that cracked me up big the other day was it was like a, a meme of the back to the future from the second one where Doc yeah. Brown comes back from the future and he's like saying to Marty he goes whatever you do <laughs> don't go to 2020, go to 2020. <laughs> which yeah. cracked me up so yeah. now you're you're in the real estate space yeah correct mm -hmm. okay and you have a company called GTG Military Moves does that stand for good to go yeah, well, I guess it does. It is actually a play on uh, my last name when I started the business. Um, uh, it was my husband and I at the time, and we, we both had the same last name. It was G. He was military. It's a play on words. I just liked it, so I, I, I got to keep it. <laughs> right on. Okay. So then yeah. we throw good to go in there as well, and that's that's pretty awesome. It was, so what do you do? You, you work strictly with the military, or what's that? No, I work with anyone who wants to buy a house. I just happen to live close to four military installations, and oh, wow. uh, my dad was Air Force for 22 years. Um, I married into the military family for a total of like 13 years. Uh, military life is all I've known. Um, I've bought twice with a VA loan, and when, when I moved from Italy to Maryland, um, I had a really hard time finding a realtor to help me. Um, and then I would, I would work with realtors who claimed that, you know, they understood the military lifestyle, so on and so forth. But then I would start talking in acronyms because that's what the military does. And then there, yeah. I like just cricket. Yeah. So it was like, I was like, you know, what? I want to make sure that, uh, at least if I can help it, other people aren't going to have the same experience. So, um, and I mean, we just like, you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust and mm -hmm. in the military community, you know, we move every three years we're away from family and um like just knowing that oh you're you know your military spouse your military brat your active duty like all of a sudden you have a common ground so um right. i focus on that because you know it's it's quote unquote low-lying fruit but i'll sell a home to anyone who wants to get into a home renting sure. buying selling i'm a realtor but what a great niche that you're able to target and market in and help and and the branding's good it's there clearly <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 So now what, what was it that inspired you to become a realtor? Um, this is going to sound absolutely not at all uh, motivating. I just, <laughs> I'm going to be real honest. Yeah. I, we, I moved here and, and I say here, moved to Maryland in 2015 after a three year, um, a three year, I forget what it's, after three years of being in, stationed at a, a base in, in Italy, I was a bartender for two and a half years. I made a ton of money doing that. It was awesome. I like talking to people. But my son at the time was like, you know, mom, before we moved to Italy, you were a 911 dispatcher and you worked the night shift. And then we moved to Italy and you worked at the bar and you worked the night shift. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of tired of you working at night. Yeah. So while, while we were looking for um, our home, my husband at the time was like, hey, you should be a realtor. You'd be good at it. You're great at bartending. And I was like, alcohol in homes. All right, cool. I'll do it. <laughs> no, and that makes sense. And that's a great transition. Before I got into sales, I was, you know, and worked in restaurants as well. And I think you, when you come into that, you, you come in with a natural service tendency. Yeah. I mean, I like right. to help people. I'm not going to lie. The money's great. Um, I can work you know, I can work from anywhere in the world that I want to. Um, 
I, I'm the, my big joke during COVID-19 was like, apparently I just live a quarantine lifestyle because, you know, I work for my house. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm in my soft pants. Sometimes I'm in my normal pants. Um, but I work from home, work from my bed, work from my couch. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to be around for my kid. I wanted to be able to make a good income um, and, you know, kind of be my own boss. Yeah, I totally get it. I've, I've been privileged to be able to work for Grant from home. Uh, since early 2013. And so when all of this started going on and people were like, hey, how are you holding up? I'm like, assuming I don't turn on the news or look, go outside, like nothing's changed for me. Yeah, I'm like, my gym clothes and my, my, my nails don't look awesome. But this is just my Tuesday, guys. Like, right, right. I've always, I always joke when I get on sales meeting calls and stuff, if I'm talking to a group of sales guys and they're like, hey, you work from home, what's that like? I'm like, it's great, just don't ask me to stand up because I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> exactly well you know you're better than me i won't even i won't even turn on my camera yeah okay no i always do it's uh, I, I like the personal touch if i can make Good it for you <laughs> um, so where did so you start your tendon bar uh you decided to become a realtor when you moved to maryland that was probably a relatively easy transition for you i i, I would assume um oh i forgot to ask what what kind of bar was it like a college bar where you're like three deep on a Friday night or six deep on a Friday night or was it more of a low-key higher-end setting? It was the post bar um, and I got to serve all of um, the 173rd, the infantry oh, wow. guys, okay. um, USARAF. Um, yeah, I, was, I got to serve a bunch of, a bu a bunch of soldiers and uh, it was generally, it was usually about two of us plus the manager. Sometimes it was just me um, it just depended on the night, but uh, they're great. They were great clients. I built a lot of really amazing relationships. I, my view, you know, as being, being independent, um, yeah. somebody in the military, literally almost all my life, um, I had one view and then like getting to hear the stories, talk to the people, um, like it kind of changed my whole view and it was, it was just an amazing experience. Yeah. I, I love the military. I think like th there should be, um, my wife, she's a Krav Maga instructor and in Israel, oh, wow if you're, if you're a citizen, you're, you're pulling two years in the military, no matter what, just mm -hmm. part of the deal. And I feel like that would be such an important piece uh, or addition to American culture. If that was part of just, what your, we got to do. yeah, just putting, just dropping two years. Like I don't have a lot of regrets in life. Um, mm -hmm. All the stupid stuff I've done is helped make me who I am today. And I love who I am today. So I don't really have a lot of regrets, but if I could go back and talk to Dave, it's 17, right? It would be, hey, listen to that recruiter. <laughs> Pay right. really close attention to that man. Because the, 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 what I read now, when I, you know, when I start looking for things to enhance my discipline and to be like all my books, I got a stack of Navy SEAL books over here, right? Yeah, so you learned Jocko how to be willing. Yeah, Jocko, David Goggins, Mark Devine. Like these are dudes that like are just operating at a higher level. And if you want to be, a high performer a level of excellence like you should study that and i feel like that military training builds discipline in people that nobody's getting anymore correct yeah, yeah. Um, so and not just in terms of discipline like you know how to march but like you know what time you get up and how you control your day and, and all of that stuff i feel just invaluable for people and nobody you know people just aren't getting it and it kind of shows so where does grant cardone enter into your world how did, how did you find him Oh man. So I am a huge motivational business building um, junkie. I absolutely adore the way the human brain works. I love um, to, to listen to people and, and how they think and how they got their start. Um, I have a lot of trauma in my background, so I gravitate more towards people who um, have been through some, some shit, so to speak. And Great I did stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did the John Maxwell thing. I oh, yeah. did the Tony Robbins thing. I did the Mel Robbins thing, the Brene Brown thing, the Gary V thing. And all of them have really amazing things to say. And at different points in my life, it resonated more, more clearly with me and more loudly. Um, and, and Grant's just a business guy. And he, ha he has a, I mean, it's the same message, but his delivery is, um, I mean, it's not as in your face and like, you know, crass, so to speak, as like Gary V. you know, he's not yeah. dropping all the F-bombs, you know, every other word, um, but he is very direct. He's very no nonsense. And that's me. Like, I, I've been 
you know, called quite a few names that rhyme with itch or told that I'm too, you know, I'm too direct and too, you know, I'm, I'm an alpha female and, and I need to hear, um, you know, in order to build my business, in order to build, you know, even my confidence, like, I'm like, I need to hear someone who, who's going to speak the way I listen. And Grant was that guy. Um, yeah. So then I kind of dove in, into what he has and, and I've just kind of married all of them um, and pulled from all of them to, you know, do my business the way I do it. Yeah. I, and I, that's so important, like the simplicity of it. And when you can lock on to some of the simplicity, it becomes like a, a, st- a, a place of stability. Yeah. You know, and I think it's important to learn from different people because I think, I think that um, while, you know, I tell people John Maxwell is kind of like, you know, your grandpa when you want, you know, that warm grandpa, grandpa, grandpa John. And then Tony Robbins is like your fun uncle, you know, and um, then Grant is just kind of like that, that friend that's like in your face straight up and down and going to shoot, you know, going to shoot you straight. Right. And I think that, you know, different parts of our lives, different things sound differently. We, we, the message is different. And um, I think it's important to be op- you know, open-minded enough to be able to hear or at least listen to other people's messages and see which parts, you know, belong in your little tool bag and which parts you can just, you know, okay, it's there, right. whatever. Remember that conversation in, in the movie, White Men Can't Jump, where they're talking about listening to Jimi Hendrix, but you haven't heard Jimi Hendrix, right? Yes. Exactly. And I feel like that Grant is a lot like that in the fact that, so I, I started studying his material in 2003. And then, okay. yeah, and Cardone on Demand and Cardone University launched in 2010. And I came to work with him in 2011. And so like going through like a principle, like always, always, always agree. Mm-hmm. And that being the number one rule of selling. Like when you first hear that, you totally understand it. Mm-hmm. It's simple. You yeah. can follow it. You can yeah. implement it. But, you know, 15, 20 years later, what it means now? Completely oh, my God. <laughs> it's, completely a, it's a completely different. And, and yeah, the totally way different concept. it's not going to be the same. So. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a completely different concept. It's the same, only different. You know, exactly. like when he says um, to change, you got to change. Mm-hmm. I had somebody say to me that that's stupid because it's too simple. And that's the thing that a lot of like people who are wanting to be entrepreneurs, but, but don't necessarily know how or aren't, aren't following like anybody, they're just following everybody. Like the business aspect is simple. Like, yeah. it's, it's simple to make money. It's simple to talk to people. What's hard, what makes it hard is doing it every day. What makes it hard is adapting to this personality type or that personality type. What makes it hard is when it's more fun to go party on a boat on Wednesday as opposed to sit there and make your calls or do your, you know, whatever it is your lead gen is. Like, that's the hard part. Sales is pretty simple. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you got to keep it simple. If you complicate that deal, then you just, you'll think yourself out of all of it. Exactly. So... I know that a couple of like a first or second phone conversation, you had mentioned that, you know, you've worked through a lot of stress and anxiety in your own life. And, and that's been a challenge for you. And I think that's one of the things that we connected because that was, that's been a thing for me too, you know, and I know, um, and I don't know how many people are listening to the podcast that know this or not, but 2007 in February, uh, that was the last time I took a drink of alcohol and it was, Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And, and one of the reasons why was I realized that I've been self-medicating for most of if, all of my adult life mm-hmm. you know, and that I didn't know how to handle my stress. I didn't know how to handle my anxiety. And so it was much easier to just put that in a bottle of Jack Daniels. Yeah. You know, and what was ironic is that the whole time I knew what I was doing. And I also knew that whatever bullshit I was running away from at that point would be right there waiting for me when I was done. I just needed yeah, a It's there in the morning. It's there, w- yeah. it's there with the hangover. With the headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? it doesn't go away. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. So, um, but you had, you know, so that, that's the theme for us today. And I just wanted to get like, what do you feel like is some of the, what, what causes stress and anxiety for people that are in sales, in business? And is it connected? Is it the same in just regular life? Oh man, that's such a huge question. Um, just because we all have different backgrounds and different things are triggering for us and, and right. cause us to stress. I think the loudest thing um, that I can say like as a generalization is 
um, the uncertainty, you know, people, you have people that love uncertainty and they thrive on it. And then you have people that need a constant. And a lot of times people that need a constant are busy looking at the people that don't need the constant and like, wow, they're doing cool stuff. Wow. Right. They, you know, that their end result looks really pretty. And so they jump over to the non-constant and then they freak out. Um, and there's a lot of, of inconsistency when you first start a business and in sales, you know? Um, so I think that's a big, a big block, so to speak. Um, I also think watching what other people do. Um, so many people judge their chapter one. I mean, not to sound like cliche or anything, but they, ju they judge their chapter one and are against somebody's chapter 33. Right. And it's like, you don't know how many times that person has failed. Yeah, they're winning right now. But you know, I promise you in order to get there, they failed a lot more years than you probably have been alive, you cool. know, so stop comparing. And, um, and then I think at least in, in the real estate world, I think that there is an underlying message that we all have to look perfect, be perfect. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Yep. Business is booming. It doesn't matter that, you know, unemployment's at 13.3%. Our business is booming and rates are amazing. And look at all these listings I have. And I'm talking to all these people and everything's wonderful. Let me smile. Right. And that's not real life. Right. <laughs> that is not real life. Yeah. Um, but there is, I, I think there is, is that um, underlying uh, belief that that's how you have to be. And so, um, I think that causes a lot of stress. Yeah, you know, it's funny, before all of this got going, and a couple of years ago, this would have been 2013 or 14, Grant had this deal where this was right around the time where the guy that would rent the Lambo and then go park outside of an expensive restaurant and take his photo, right, or pull up to, you know, somebody else's expensive house and take a photo outside and then market that themselves. This is when that started. And you could tell that Grant, who, you know, he, he paid the price to it, so he could pay any price later, right? Mm -hmm. um, who still even, hadn't even bought any expensive car at that point was like, dude, what are these people doing? <laughs> Man, it was just like, so he had this campaign for a long time about ask, just put, calling people out. He's got a video on YouTube about it. Are you a baller or a pretender? Mm -hmm. You know, and so, and I feel like there there is a def, like a certain level of expectation that anybody that's in a higher high ticket sales arena is expected to be personified as a baller, even if you're not. <laughs> right. Which, trig which triggers the pretending, and then when you're not being real, then the fear of being exposed. Mm-hmm has got to create. It's a crazy circle. It's a yeah. crazy circle. And a lot of people think that I am not <laughs> right in the head, but I think the coronavirus uh, was not good in the sense that people were dying. Um, right. I think the coronavirus was exactly what the world needed as far as a reset goes, because um, we, we all were on the same playing field. Some of us were a little more, you know, some of them, some of us were still, you know, in a better spot because we didn't work for, you know, a different company. We, we worked for our own company or we had built our pipeline um, and we were purposeful. We knew what was happening, but I mean, we, we were all scared. We were all, you know, at risk. Um, most of us were all at home right. and so there wasn't, there, there wasn't for, you know, for two months, I didn't, I didn't see a lot. I mean, I still saw some because, you know, some people are just who they are. Like they need the likes, they need, they need the, the recognition, but um, you know, we, we were all kind of in the same boat and I think it humbled us. I think it, it made what was supposed to be important to us come full cent front and center. And I think for a lot of people, um, it, the universe kind of stepped in and gave them the push that they needed. You know, maybe they weren't in the best relationship and now they got two whole months to like, look, look at that in the face. And, you know, okay, I need to change this. You know, maybe yeah. they were, were too scared to leave a job they absolutely hated because um, they were used to the pay and they, they lost that job and, you know, had to figure out another way to make money. And now they're living their best life or on their way to it. So I think yeah. that um, I actually think it did us a lot, you know, did a lot of us some favors. Well, you know, problems are opportunities. Exactly. You know, that's, problems that's are a, projects. That's what I tell people. Yeah. You know, I don't have, I don't have problems. I have projects. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, problems and are opportunities. They're projects. It's not, you know, it's not a stopping point. It's, 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 it should be a push. Yeah. You know, 
there's always, uh, we talk a lot about, you know, in terms of what, you know, motivation is a verb. It's the thing that gets somebody going and you're either moving towards something that you want or you're moving away from something that you don't. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be really motivated, you find a way to put those two things together. Yeah. Um, I got, I got asked uh, a couple weeks ago to help someone they're they're getting ready to lose some weight and they 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 wanted some motivation because they see my posts and they see me on Facebook and I'm super motivational and I was so just I was I couldn't believe I got out never I've never had anyone ask me to help them lose weight um and I was like yeah I'm absolutely going to help you uh, but I got to tell you a secret <laughs> the motivation is only going to get you so far yeah. at the end of the day you got it you have to decide that you want to lose this weight more than you want to have that taco or have that ice cream or, you know, not do that workout. Um, so it's like, it's like, I know you're going to meet your goal. I'm going to, I'm going to keep you on track, but at the end of it, don't come and thank me. I want you to look yourself in the mirror and thank you oh, yeah. because the only way you really meet your goals is by the decisions that you make. Right. And motivations like fuel, <laughs> meaning you're going to run out. Yeah. Well, it's like bathing. Yeah. yeah, it's great in the morning, but guess what? We do that. Oh, well, I do it every day. I, I take a shower right. every day. Yeah, you have to. You have yeah. to. And you have to keep fueling that motivation. And, and um, you know, Grant talks a lot about that too, where you can't, you know, like you got to get beyond motivated and you got to get into this place of being driven or obsessed. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you got to decide, man. You got to decide that whatever it is you want, you want that more than whatever's holding you back. Mm. Um, and surprisingly, when I got into real estate, I did not realize how many people just thrived on motivation and, and just like fell in love with it. And, you know, didn't, didn't understand how to push themselves forward. Um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, I've had a lot of trauma in my past and, and um, I was like, wait a second, you don't, you don't just, you don't just do that. You don't just wake up in the morning, open your eyes and do just a quick rundown. Okay, this is all the things I have wrong in my life. Oh, here's seven things that are really awesome. And today I'm going to have a good day and then get up and go. You don't just do that. That's not a thing. Right, and right. apparently not everybody does. And I, my, my mind was blown because <laughs> that's just how I've lived. Like that's how I've gotten through everything I've gotten through in my life is, you know, the minute my eyes open, I do think of everything that is going to weigh me down. I just look at it dead in the face. You know, I have mm. bills, I have a kid, I'm overweight. I have, you know, two deals that just fell through last week. Okay. All right. We, we, we called it out. What are the good things? Hey, you know what? I'm going to do my training, my grant training. I'm going to um, go on a, a listing appointment. I'm healthy. I have a, an, a shelter over my head. I have a cute little car. I have great friends. All right. Today, today's going to be a good day. Okay. So this is really interesting. So because a lot of people in, in, the, in the whole space talk a lot about, like, I got a really good buddy named Michael Cirillo, and he's got a, a podcast called The Dealer Playbook. And then he's got a Facebook group that goes with it. And every Monday, if you're part of his group, mm -hmm. you have to post your goal for the week. Mm -hmm. You also have to post things that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. But nobody, I don't think I've ever heard anybody in the space really talk about, hey, let's confront all your bullshit to start your day. Because they don't want to. That's the, right. that's the funny thing about motivation and, and positive mindset is everyone thinks I am happy all of the time. Right. They think that I am just, you know, rainbows and unicorns 24-7 and I'm not. And there are days where I open my eyes and the list of things that is not awesome in my life is a little bit heavier than yeah. it was yesterday. Yeah. Right. And so I take that space and I say, okay, we're going to be upset about this. This is this, you know, you are sad. You are scared. You are mad. You are angry. Those are all very valid feelings. You have a right to feel those feelings and we're going to feel them until two o'clock today. And at two o'clock today, we're going to wash our face or shake it out. And then we're going to take on the rest of the day or I take the day and I say, you know, today I'm just going to be upset. I'm just going to cry. I'm just people don't afford themselves that and they wonder why they burn out. They wonder why they, you know, have high blood pressure. They wonder, you know, why they're unhappy. And it's like, you have to control, you have to confront the bullshit and it's okay to own those feelings, owning those feelings, acknowledging those feelings. Don't make you, you know, your money in your account's not going to change. The car that's sitting in your driveway isn't going to disappear. Um, it's okay to just have feelings. It's okay to say, you know what, that client was really shitty. 
Right. Or, you know what, I was not very nice to that person and they didn't deserve that. And I can do better. Right. You know, own your shit, feel it, but set a time limit. Don't, you know, don't just wallow in it. Say, okay, yeah. I'm going to be upset about this for the next three hours. I'm going to be upset at this for the next three minutes. Um, and then get back to work. Get back uh, to work because yeah. our, my bills still come on the 15th, 22nd, and 1st of the month. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. We, you know, Grant talks a lot about going all in on things and we did, uh, we had a sales meeting recently and he says, Hey, if you're going to quit, just quit, <laughs> just quit. Yeah. Cause if you've said it in here, you've already done it. You just have yeah, to just, just be done with it. quit, Yeah. you know, and then, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay that way either. Quitting doesn't mean stopping. Right. You can just screw this. Take you a few minutes, today, come back, recommit. Yeah. Today I'm done. This hour I'm yeah. done. And then I'm going to come back. Yeah. Um, and I think if more people did that and the message was it's okay. And it's not like, you know, there's going to be some people that will listen to this and be like, oh, well, she's a girl. Like girls are emotional and that that's fine. She can do that. Um, well, guys are a lot more emotional than girls is what I've found when I've had these right. conversations with them. And I've had men be like, you know what, that we don't have a space for that. We don't have anyone telling us that. And yeah. I'm telling all, men out there, I'm telling women too, but men out there, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be overwhelmed. It's okay to be afraid. And it's okay to voice that, whether you're voicing it out loud, whether you're, you know, hitting a punching bag um, and saying that, whether you're journaling about it, like it's okay to feel those emotions, say those emotions, you know, find a buddy, find a partner, what, whatever it is that you need to like uh, to own that, it doesn't make you less of a man, right. but it does get it out of here and it puts it out in the world. It gets it out of you so that that the person that you know you are and the person that shows up and the person who gets the work done, they have that space to show up again. I think one of the lost arts of one of the victims, well, not the victim, how do I say this? So with technology changing the way people function, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go back, I don't know, 150 years, if we, if we go back to like the 1880s, for example, Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way you would r knock out an evening was you would read mm -hmm. from a book, like flip pages and stuff, right? By candlelight, most likely. <laughs> and then as we progressed a little bit more, then we wind up in the late teens, early 20s, and then this radio thing showed up. But you would still spend time listening and reading and interacting with a family member. But the other thing that people used to do all the time that nobody does anymore for the most part is journal. Mm -hmm. you, you'd write down your stuff. Mm -hmm. You'd get it out. You'd have like a diary. Like and my mom kept the diary. It. Actually write it. And I have people today, oh, Sonia, I journal, I type it in. Your brain fires differently from oh. when you're doing this, when you're typing than when you're actually writing it like your brain literally fires differently. Yeah. And so I encourage people journal, journal yeah. and, and read. And here's the cool thing about reading because we are in such a, an, a, techno a, a technology age, you, you just keep scrolling. Like the more you scroll, the more information comes with a book, you get to the end of the page and you can either go to the next page or you could just close it and it's done. Yeah. And books have an ending. And I think that's like a, a big, a big problem for us, right? Is there's no ending to any of the information, whether it's good or it's bad, there's just no ending. Right. And with books and journals, you have a beginning, you have a middle, you have an end. And I'm a big fan of reading. I do 10 minutes every single day. I'm a big fan of journaling. I journal in the morning, I journal at night. Um, and I encourage people to do it more. And you, have you found that that has helped tremendously with your like with just handling stress and everyday stuff and working out whatever you got going on it causes so i have i i have i have complex ptsd um i have i i have anxiety just in life like my brain is is in constant survival mode um and so for me it makes my brain focus on just what's here, just what's here, not what zones, you know, all these other people are going to say, not what's going to happen in 10 minutes, not what happened. It's just here. I'm just here and I'm present and I'm now, and that causes my brain to stop. And mm. 
my brain loves to distract me, <laughs> you right. know, and, and it, it was something I had to learn to do. When I got into real estate, I didn't journal a lot. I didn't read a lot. Um, I had to train myself to do it. And to those out there who are like, well, I don't do that now. Okay, that's cool. Well, there was a time where you didn't walk and you didn't poop in the toilet and you, you right. trained yourself to do it. You figured it so, out. So, so train yourself to do it and it will, it'll make it, I, I think for me as someone with anxiety, um, and, and with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, um, for me to be able to do it and it just brings a lot of peace to me. So, so far we've talked about like handling the triggers of stress, which would be uncertainty. And I, it's so, do you find that it's interesting to me that like, regardless of where you're at on this, as a human being, you need to have a level of stability and certainty in your life, but you also have to have, like it's a human need, the uncertainty to some degree. I think, and uh, when I went to the 10X um, convention, and I think it was John Travolta who said this, and it totally changed the way I look at exactly what you're talking about. He said that, you know, everyone was looking for work-life balance and work is your certainty, right? And then yeah. life is like your uncertainty and, and they're working to balance it. So, so it all meshes together. Well, right. when you balance things, there's always the, the possibility for everything to fall apart, right? Right, right. So now you're, so now you have the stress of work and the stress of life and keeping those balanced. And then you have the stress of not letting everything topple. Right. John Travolta said that he stopped doing that. And instead he started focusing on work-life harmony, how to get his work and his life to live in harmony with each other. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, once he, once he did that itty bitty little tweak, and it's, it's a semantics uh, tweak t at the end of the day, it's just changing the words, but just those words changes how you look at it and then changes how you respond to it. So there's, when you think of harmony, what happens? Right. Your shoulders drop, your breathing gets a little bit, you know, more even, you're calm. And, um, I think that, that it's important to find work-life harmony, whether you're in sales, whether um, you're the CEO of a company that's not selling something, like whatever you do, like work to, if, if, you're, if your end goal is work-life harmony and every day you're working towards that, then I think that's going to change your whole, entire your whole entire stress structure, the way you think about your job, the way you think about your family, um, and it's going to take a lot of that anxiety off the table. Yeah, I mean, I think words... I don't, I mean, I understand the idea that it's semantics, but I don't know, like, that shouldn't negate the power of it. Right. Right. Like words, words are really, really powerful, you know? And as a kid, you know, if like I got picked on a lot as a kid and, um, and I get that. And so you, you grow up on this whole sticks and stones may break your bones thing. And you, you like reinforce that you reinforce that, but the older, like once you recognize you know, Grant's got this great lesson that selling is a conversation. Power comes from the words that you use. And in our company and in our culture, we are consistently cracking open a dictionary and looking at what the word means, what the origin of it is, what the etymology is and the history of it. And like, we say these words all the time, you know, like the word nice. Mm -hmm. You know, Grant's, uh, that, that was like one of the first lessons when I was working with him in the Miami office uh, back when Grant lived in Los Angeles, you, you know, we start talking about, well, I, you know, I, I said this, I'm like, well, I don't, you know, I want to be nice to the guy, you know, he was telling me to like get harder on this guy. I'm like, I want to be nice to the guy. He goes, have you looked up the word nice in the dictionary? I'm like, <laughs> do you even know what it means? I'm like, nice. It's, it's amicable. He goes, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I look it up, right? And um, he goes, and I go over the definition. He goes, now what's the history of the word? So I keep looking, and the etymology is that it's French, means village idiot. <laughs> but you and know, I'm you like, very often, do you? <laughs> oh. So, and then I start thinking about, about all that, like when I was in the car business selling cars, and I would, I would introduce a client or somebody I was trying to sell a car to to the manager. And, the, and they would tell my manager, well, Dave's been very nice. And I thought that was a compliment. 
You don't anymore, huh? And no, I don't. And you know, and <laughs> and then I think be about nice to anybody anymore, are you? Right. And then I think about some gal in high school. You're so nice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a village idiot. I don't Where's want to be part of it. Words are powerful. And that's why when I heard that, I was like, I, you know, screw your work-life balance. I don't want it. Right. I yeah. want I want life harmony. I want work-life yeah. harmony. Harmonics. I love it. I love that. So when, like what, clearly, so if you've had, or you've, you've, you're going through, or I, I don't know if that's something you get over, but so with PTSD, with mm -hmm. previous trauma experiences in your life, you know, I, for me, I told you I got off alcohol in 2007. I'm not going to be the guy that was going to, you know, I believe Alcoholics Anonymous is an important piece of a process. You know, I, I've gone to meetings, I'll pop in every now and again, but I have a, I take issue with being able to stand up and say, even now, I'm 10 years later, my name is David Bradley and I'm an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I feel like alcohol is a, like, that's a challenge that you have to, to work through, but you don't have to stay an alcoholic. If well, you yeah, you're recovering to, alcoholic. Right. So, you know, or like, and I used to smoke cigarettes, right? And I wrote a book about how to stop smoking without killing anyone. And the power of those words is that I, I don't, it's impossible to quit smoking, but you can stop. Like, technically, I haven't quit yet, <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't smoked one since 2002. Yeah. But I'm still a smoker. I'm just a smoker who doesn't smoke. And that, just like you're saying, the difference between balance and harmony, it changes everything. Right. So for people that think about quitting something, you know, like, I, I can't, you know, that means never again. Mm -hmm. And if you're addicted to a chemical substance and you think never again, well, that's not going to happen. Mm -mm. My it's brain is... It's all about today. You know what yeah. I mean? It's all about today. What can I do to, what can I do with the next, I don't know, how many hours a day do you work? I work like 14, 16 hours a day for the next 14 or 16 hours. How can I make my life? How, how can I, how can I put a brick down that's going to continue to build this foundation of this great life that I'm living? Yeah. You so know? if there's somebody that's watching this right now, they've, they've stumbled on this, they're watching on YouTube, or they're listening to it on the podcast or however they're getting this. If that person is working through their own PTSD, they've had a traumatic experience in their past and they're in, the, well, they're in the world, they're in life. Mm -hmm. And all of this stress and triggers are happening. What would, what could you give to them or what would you advise them on? Like in the moment, here comes the anxiety attack. Here comes the panic attack. It's, it's coming. How would you work somebody through that? I would tell them, take a breath. Stop whatever you're doing. Just breathe. Okay. Yep. In and out. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Just take a breath. Okay. It's like Mr. Miyagi. Now tell me something you can see. Okay. Tell me something you can smell. Tell me something you can hear. What's one thing you've already accomplished today? Mm. What's one thing you can accomplish in the next hour? When's the last time you looked in the mirror and you said, you know what, today's hard. I can't control what I can't control, but I'm here, I'm still doing it. I'm valuable, I matter. These, these anxious feelings are mine and, and they're valid. And I'm gonna take, an, I'm gonna take another step forward. Mm. Um, we've, whether you have an addiction, whether you are healing from trauma, um, whether you're in the midst of your own storm, whatever you're facing today, you've had a day where you thought it was the worst day of your life and you, were, you weren't, there was no way you were going to survive it. And today you're not even thinking about that day. So guess what? Whatever's happening right now, you're going to get through. Yeah. Um, and we, really... can, we can only control us. You know, once I let go of like, I, you know, I, oh, oh, I, can, I can control this person. If I just tell them this, or if I just say this, then I have control of them. And then what I want to have happen, once I let go of controlling other people and just took 100% onus for me, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of snow. Snow's in Maryland. Yeah, you live in Maryland. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of cold. It gets cold in Maryland. Yeah, now, does. I can be miserable and cold which those are two unfun things to be, right. especially simultaneously. Or I can be cold and be happy that I don't have to be cold, you know, in a tent. Right. 
I don't have to be cold living on the street. I have way too many black jackets <laughs> that will keep me warm. I have way too many, you know, you know what I mean? So it's just yeah. like, just using that, you know what, this isn't the greatest situation and I can go ahead and make my experience through it better. Because it Ms. seems Lee, like yeah. what you're doing, these, this exercise that you just sort of ran everybody through really gets somebody here. It gets them okay. present. It gets them in yeah. the now. It gets them, because typically for, I know for me, that more often than not, and I'll go to Wayne Dyer on this, but he talks about stress being a desire of the ego. It is a moment where what I think Dave thinks should be happening does not match what is actually happening. And so that yeah. causes a, a, a disconnect in that. But, you know, it's like, if you can just get out of that and get into being here and now and then that was one of the lessons that grant gave us when this whole thing started he goes the faster you get to acceptance the sooner you can start doing something about it but if you're in denial if you're pissed off about it if you're you know going to try and bargain your way through it all the different stages of grief like all of those stages literally apply to any traumatic situation that you find yourself in including the coronavirus mm -hmm. Well, I think once yeah. you get to acceptance and then get to gratitude, yeah. I think there's so much power in gratitude. And um, I, I'm not, I won't lie to you. The last, the last 10 days have been incredibly emotionally trying for me. I don't do really well um, with a lot of strong emotion, whether it's happy or it's sad. I just, I'm, I'm very sensitive to that kind of energy. Yeah. Um, and it was, I, I spent three days crying. I just didn't know how to put words to anything. I was, I was just, you know, I was out of sorts. Um, and I forgot to look for the gratitude. And that sounds almost like, I don't know, like it sounds kind of trite. Oh, you're going to find, you know, gratitude and, you know, wrong, <laughs> wrongfully treating a human being. You're going to find gratitude in right. all this anger. Yeah. I found gratitude in that, you know, we, in business, we talk about, you know, breakdowns lead to breakthroughs and, um, in order to, you know, you're never going to change. The only time that you're going to change is when it's, it's more painful staying the same than it is moving forward. Right. Right. right? That's and some classic Tony Robbins right there. Classic Tony Robbins. Right. Um, and the world just got a big dose of it. Like it is so uncomfortable right now staying collectively staying as we have been, whether we were doing it unintentionally, whether we were doing it intentionally, whether we were in that weird space where it's like, no, I didn't really feel that way, but also I wasn't really supporting, you know what I mean? Like it has become so uncomfortable now that the world as a whole is, is going to have to change. Something has to change. And that's, an, that's just amazing to be able to see. I get to see it when I, when I, when I get to coach like new agents, I, I help with our new agent program. So when I get to, you know, I get to see new agents get so uncomfortable with their bullshit that finally mm -hmm. they make a change. <laughs> they have to. I had to, I had to yeah. get uncomfortable with my bullshit, you know, in order to, to, to do what I'm doing now and, and to step out of my comfort zones. So, but to be able to witness it on just this worldwide stage and it's going to get uglier before it gets better. But the, I, I was like, okay, there's my gratitude. There's my gratitude. There's my acceptance. Now I need to, you know, he, what change can I make? How can I help? How can I show up? And I think going from acceptance to gratitude and then either going from accept, going from feelings, acknowledging them, validating them to accepting the situation, accepting you can only change you, finding gratitude in that space and then choosing when you're going to move forward. I think, I think that's, that's the process. At least that's the process for me. Going from denial to gratitude. I, I, I love that. There was one of the things like a, a couple of weeks. Um, so if this is, this is interesting. I, w one of the lessons that I got in college from a theater professor mm -hmm. was um, the theatrical definition of tragedy. So we were studying Shakespeare. So if you look at any Shakespearean tragedy, the one key theme that goes to the entire deal is that when you get to the end of the play and you look back at everything that caused the tragedy, the whole thing was avoidable. <laughs> Maybe. 
yeah, but like one, and there's usually a catalyst that if, if you zigged when you should have zagged, none of this would have happened. And there may be multiples of that where it just stacks up, right? But yeah. in, in a traditional Shakespearean tragedy, the, the idea was that it's, it's all avoidable. It didn't need to go down the way it went down. And like, as, as I'm watching this unfold like you, like I'm looking at this from that lens. I'm like, all of this, and that in and of itself triggers all of this, the, the stress that comes with that. And so my thing has been just getting myself, as you've talked about, let's just get here in the now with what exists. Let us work with that and let us consistently strive to just be a better version of ourselves every single day. Because I'm not, I can't change the world until I change me. Yeah, you have to be the change because the truth yeah. is we, individually, we can't change the world. We can change ourselves, we can change ourselves and then come together to create change. Yeah, one of my favorite concepts is the idea about think globally, act locally. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's so, so important on, on every level, whether that's the humans and the, the culture, the humanities, or if that's even from environmental or just how I interact with other people, you know, I've always, I always talk about, you know, when we, when I'm talking to a company about sales training and I'm talking to a management team and I'm like, you guys need to be doing the training too. This isn't just for your guys. This is for you. Number one, you got to lead by example. And then number two, if, you know, if the cabin loses air pressure, who puts their mask on first? Exactly. You. I do. Because you can't help anybody if you can't breathe. Mm -mm. So you need to make sure that you're using this to keep you right. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's, I think that's so, so, so important and just sort of coming back full circle. It's like, man, you have to like, you have to be present and you have to be in this moment working with what truly exists, not what your ego thinks should be happening or getting pulled out in all these other directions. And I love the fact that you start all of that with your breath, because it's the one thing that you will always be in control of. hundred percent. And, um, speaking about breath, I challenge anyone listening to this and you even when, you know, when, when you're hearing something you don't like, yeah, or you're hearing something that's uncomfortable, pay really close attention to what happens. You hold your breath. And then when whoever's mm. done talking, talking, you go, mm. your body mm -hmm. rejects it. Yeah. I challenge everyone to, when they're hearing something they don't like, breathe through it. Yeah. Don't tighten your body up. Don't, don't block it out. Feel it hear it try to understand it if you can't understand it at least acknowledge the other person has a right to whatever they're saying and maybe it's worked for them or maybe it's something that they read um but breathe definitely definitely breathe it starts with breath yeah when i'm out on a long run mm -hmm. most people and you know typically you want to quit your workout way sooner than your body needs to Oh yeah, it's all the mind thing. Your body yeah. will do all kinds of crazy things. Your brain is the one that says, "Not nah, done, we're done." Right, and the reality is, you have so much more left, right? Oh yeah, and there's a there's a moment, like, like there's a moment between when you're standing straight up right and you fall down, where your where your brain is like, "Okay, are we falling? Or are we are we going? What are we going to do?" And then yeah. you make, then then you subconsciously make the decision to fall. And I love breathing through my my urge to quit when, yeah. I'm, when I'm running. That's the best. And even though you're running and you're obviously you're breathing anyway, but I will literally start as soon as I feel like I want to quit and I, and I know I've got more gas in the tank and that it's just my brain trying to talk me out of it right now. I just breathe through that and I start controlling my breath during the run. And typically what, and I realize what, now that you've mentioned that is that more often than not, when I'm on those runs, when I feel like I want to quit, it's because I stopped breathing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then look at why you stopped breathing. There's a trigger. Something triggered you. Was it a smell? Was it a word in the song? Was it, was it a thought that went through your head? When you can yeah. learn your triggers, when you can learn them, acknowledge them, write them down, understand them, see how this links to that and why it happens, then all of a sudden when you feel those triggers coming on, I have a ton of triggers. I told y'all I have PTSD. I have a ton of triggers. Yeah. Um, when I feel those coming on, then I can say to myself, because it, it does happen in my, okay, Today is Friday. 
June 5th, 7.22 p.m., everything's okay. And, and then you can, then, then you, you just learn to control you. And once you can control you, no, it, nobody else really matters, right? Like, you, you, once you've mastered you, you're going to be just living life on a completely different level. I just, it's so, I can't under, I can't under, under, uh, what's the word? Not underestimate, but over, overemphasize maybe <laughs> how important it is to get yourself in present time. Yeah, just be present. Depression is, when, when you find yourself depressed, now granted, there's like a whole chemical thing that happens and I understand that and I acknowledge it and it's real, but depression is when your brain is, is pulling you into the past and you can't change the past. And anxiety is when you are living too far in the future. You can't control the future. <laughs> what you can control is right here, right now, who you are, how you're breathing, how you're standing, what you're, you can control your thought. Maybe not the first thought, but you can definitely control the one that comes after that. Man, so for those of you listening at home, if you, if you missed that, rewind it. Because <laughs> you all just got your money worth, right? So <laughs> depression is being stuck in the past. Grant calls that also insanity. Yeah. Like, look that word up. I will. I'm going to yeah. write it up right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and then an anxiety is too far in the future. It's living in the future. If, you, if, if for those, yeah, like if you could just start there, right? Just recognize, hey, how am I feeling? I'm a little bit depressed. Well, that means you're stuck in the past. What you worked on? Work through that get back up to now, or I'm freaking out, then you're too far ahead. Mm -hmm. And it's something you're going to have to train yourself to do. You're not, I trained myself how to do it very, very, very early on to the point that when I was cognizant of it, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Where did you just figure that out? Or did you, were you taught that? No, that's how my brain survived. That's how my brain survived everything that, that I've gone through. Um, and I mean, like, and I, I don't mean to like, I guess toot my horn, but even my therapist. Toot it. No one else is going to. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, my therapist was like, I, we were in the middle of a session, and I went from like a completely like just crying, sad, sobbing, just little puddle of me, and then I went. But also, I have X Y Z happening. Da 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 da. And she looked at me and she goes, "Who taught you how to do that?" Yeah. And I was like, "Do what?" She goes, you literally went from six-year-old you to present you and just put all this bad stuff in this little bitty bag and, and rattled off three things that you're grateful for. And, and now you're just having this conversation. So when I said, it's not, I, it's not like, you know, I spent a ton of time and I, and I was purposeful learning this trait. It was how I survived. But I tell people that if, if you're struggling and you want a way this is a good way. It may not be the way, but it's a great way, but it's also going to be something that you're going to have to teach yourself and train your brain to do. You're not just going to wake up that, that way. Um, so, and don't be, don't be so hard on yourself. You've gotcha. lived what your brain has, has handled stress. However, it's handled stress for all these years. It's learned really great coping mechanisms. It's learned really bad, me bad mechanisms. And so now you want to learn a different one. You got to give your brain time, you know, to learn how to do that too. And you and you've made it this far. Yeah, I'm going strong. I'll be 40 this year. So. But did you die? I did not. Not <laughs> once. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome. So if somebody is in the market for a home in the Maryland area, what? How do they get a hold of you? Um, I would say call me, but I don't use my phone for that. Just, I do text. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Give me a you phone a call. Huh? Do you have a website? Uh, yeah, Sonia Graham at jparmd.com. Um, you can call me or text me directly, 443-720-9491. You can shoot me an email, Sonia at g2gmilitarymoves.com. I am on all the social platforms, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. I think I have a TikTok. Right. <laughs> So, I haven't figured that out yet either. Kevin Hart was talking about that at GrowthCon, and I, I still don't really get it. It's all. so much fun. Be careful. You will lose days. You think you lost days on Pinterest, you will lose days on TikTok. Right. 
Okay. Uh, but my lender partner, he, I call him the master of TikTok. He has over a million followers. He, all of his content is basically a uh, lender mortgage focused and he gets a ton of leads every day. A million people? Yep. Wow. Check him out. Um, uh, that mortgage guy, that's who he is on TikTok. That, that mortgage, mortgage guy. guy. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Well, that might be somebody worth studying. Yeah. <laughs> so is there, a, is there a website too for GTG Military Moves? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you can go to g2gmilitarymoves.com. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I, uh, and, I got I mean, a whole lot out of this. <laughs> well, thank you. I did too. Um, yeah. Also, I'm not just, even though I'm only licensed in Maryland, I have a huge uh, network of agents all throughout the United States who I have personally worked with and have vetted and hold to a very high standard. So um, even if you're not looking to buy rent or sell in Maryland, give me a shout. I can connect you with a pretty awesome person. Man, that's awesome. So you, you're, you're, uh, you're a giant Rolodex. <laughs> I try to, I want to be that per, Hey, Sonia, she knows a guy, she knows a yep. girl. Well, you said something in the beginning about how, you know, people are going to do business with somebody that they know, like, and trust. And, you know, on, on this particular, you know, in this little conversation that we've just had, you know, you've shared a lot and you've gone, you've sort of opened up Sonia a little bit and for random strangers that you'll, you may never meet, you know, and maybe that's safe or maybe that's dangerous. I don't know. But like the fact that you've shared some of the stuff that you have is pretty intimate. So people now know you and I would assume they like you at this point. And because you're willing to have this conversation, uh, you're probably trustworthy as well. So whoever you can refer to probably is going to carry some merit and some weight. They, I, th I think they are. I am very picky. I don't just drop names to drop names. I don't, um, I don't choose someone because they make a lot of money. I choose them because they made a lot of connection with me and they made, you know, and, and, and the people that I've referred to, they've shown them that yes, they're good at their business, but they're good at people and they care. And um, they share a lot of the same values as I do. So um, th that, that's, what's the most important thing to me. I, I want people to, I want to be a safe space for people. Um, I, I'm an open book. I was very ashamed of my story for a very, very, very long time and secrets keep you sick. Um, and I, I, if, if one person can listen to anything I say, whether it's on, um, this podcast or whether it's on my, my live videos, or if one person hears something and says, you know what? I can be better, do better. She can do it. I can do it. And I can do it better. Um, hey, I'm actually not alone in this. That's amazing. And they find hope, motivation, or inspiration. Then I've done my job. Yeah, man, that's really, that's, uh, you're, you're reminding me of, uh, I, I read a story about mother Teresa. They were doing an interview with her and they were asking her like how she gets through, you know, life and what she does and where she works and how she like functions through that. And she said, you know, every day I see Jesus Christ and all of his distressing disguises. Mm -hmm. And then they asked her, right. That's never crazy. found him in the church. Yeah, I'll be honest, no, I've never found him in a building. I always find it in people who society has turned their back on or who are hurting um, and who feel alone. Right. And then that was the next thing they asked her, like, what would you, what do you want to do or what's most important to you? And she goes, I don't I, People need to know they're not alone. Mm -hmm. That you're never they alone. Yeah. They, there's been times that I felt alone. There's, there's been situations that I've had to deal with in my life that are uncomfortable and cringy. And, and I thought I was the only one until I realized I wasn't. And, and it, all it took was one person saying, Oh, I have had that problem or, Oh my gosh, I feel, you know what I mean? And then I was like, okay, so there's hope. Yeah. So however you folks listening at home have found this, you know, if you take one thing away, just recognize that you, you're not alone. Nope. You know? Man, Sonia, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you for asking me. I appreciate yeah. it so much. It was no, such I a just, great talk. And I'm so sorry we got longer than we planned. It's um, okay. It was you worth it. Time. <laughs> right. You guys listening. It was it worth it. I'm, I assume it was. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much. And we should probably come back and revisit this when all of the COVID dust is settled and see, you know, just expand on everything we just talked about. Let's do it. I'm down. Any way I can help and, and show up and, and provide value. I'm here to do that. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Have a terrific all night. Right. Thank you everyone for okay. listening. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Wow. Right. That was, uh, that was good. That was really, really good. I got a lot out of it. I think 
Um, I teased it in the very beginning. So just just to recap, like, are you going to are you what what did you get out of it? Right. Are you going to start doing some journaling? And if you are, then I want to encourage you to do a couple things. Start working through confronting some of the bad stuff that's going on in your world right now. Like confront it and find ways to turn it into gratitude and list off all the, the, the unfortunate stuff that you have to work through today. And then, and then move into your gratitudes. I'm going to try that. That's really, that's interesting to me. So I'm going to give that a shot. Uh, I love the idea about putting timestamps on your feelings. Are you going to do that? Hey, I'm pissed off. I'm going to be pissed off for five minutes and then I'm going to move on with my life. Like, how cool is that? I mean, and that's, we're totally capable of doing that. So let's start today. Um, and then what about, you know, she talked about what depression means versus anxiety and how depression means that you're stuck off in some past moment and anxiety means you're too far ahead in the future. How can you take what she gave us in terms of being present and being in the now? And what can you do with that? And think about that from a sales perspective. If you're in sales right now and you've got an appointment coming and they're going to be here in 20 minutes and this is the deal that you need to get in order to hit a certain bonus and you're starting to stress out, you're getting overly anxious, how can you take what she gave you and get yourself present in the now and make sure that when your customer arrives that you're fully there for them, that you're, that you're here, you're with them, not the future version of them, but with them here with them now, and that you're not with the last customer you just worked with, right? Okay, so I got so much out of this conversation, and and I hope you did too. Make sure that you've subscribed to the podcast so that you don't miss episodes like this when I do them. Um, throw me some con, uh, throw me some um, comments, right? Leave a comment down at the bottom. What'd you get out of this? Share it with somebody else. Because if I got something out of it, you got something out of it, somebody else is going to get something out of it too. So make sure you get this one out. Share it with people that you know might be struggling with this so they can get some relief. Okay. Uh, also, Cardone Solutions Podcast, definitely brought to you by Cardone University. This is the number one sales training program in the galaxy. In the galaxy. We've built it out for individuals like yourself, and we've also built it out for sales teams. So if you're a manager in a sales organization, we have a way to get you an extra 15 to 30% in less than 90 days. I got a way to take your new hires and turn them into stone cold killer professionals in 90 days or less. If you have veterans that have fallen asleep and are very, very comfortable with what they're doing, I got a way to increase their production 10 to 15% in 90 days. If you're a manager and, and, and you need help becoming a leader, I got a way to do that too. So if you want some more information on Cardone University, visit cardonesolutions.com forward slash 10x your team. If you're an individual, if you're a solopreneur and you want to get some free access to Cardone U, visit cardonesolutions.com forward slash Cardone, the letter U and the word free. I got four ways for you to get inside Cardone University right now on that website. That's cardonesolutions.com forward slash Cardone, the letter U, free. This has been the Cardone Solutions Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Have an awesome rest of your day and be great because nothing else pays.